I'm going to show you how you can use only a hundred bucks to create a sweet HomeKit smart home along with 12 useful automation ideas that you can do with these new smart devices to make your life easier. All of these devices do require a HomeKit hub to control them remotely and run automations. So either an iPad, Apple TV, or a HomePod mini. And the HomePod mini is the cheapest HomeKit hub at a hundred bucks. So we will not be including that in the budget and we will not be using any kind of device that requires a hub to work right out the box. So Philips Hue and Acara are unfortunately out. The first HomeKit device that's great whenever you're first starting out a smart home is a smart plug. Smart plugs are a quick and inexpensive way to make virtually anything smart. It connects to your Wi-Fi and it's easy to get them set up and start controlling your device straight from your phone. I have one on a fan that will help keep my room cool without having to get up to turn it on. My brand of choice for a HomeKit smart plug is Miros. You can get a two pack of Miros smart plugs for about 20 bucks. So about $10 a piece. I've used Miros for about a year now and actually the majority of my smart plugs in my smart home are Miros because they have proven to be reliable and respond extremely fast in HomeKit. And with the Miros outdoor smart plug, you can control outdoor lights like string lights straight from your phone and it costs about the same. When it comes to automating your smart plugs, one option is to put one on your phone charger. I put one on my phone charger and at night my plug will come on and start to charge my phone and then after about an hour and a half, my smart plug will automatically turn off. Another device that you can automate, which is my favorite, is the coffee pot. You can schedule it to come on in the morning so you can wake up to a fresh cup of coffee. What I really like about the Miros smart plug is that it has a built-in timer in the Miros app. I've set up a smart plug for our dog's food and water bowl so they can have a small light whenever they eat. And whenever I run my goodnight scene, the nightlight and TV will turn on. And after 30 minutes, the nightlight will turn off and then auto turn off the TV so it's not on all night. The next device that's great to add to a HomeKit smart home is a smart bulb which is a regular E26 light bulb that connects to your Wi-Fi and can be controlled from your phone or with Siri. They come in either just white with different hues of white, which is the cheapest option, or you can get them with colors, which is the more expensive option. And since we're building a sweet HomeKit smart home, we'll go with color. Normally, I would choose LifeX since I think they offer the most bang for your buck, but at $35 a piece, they do exceed our budget of $100. So my second option is to go with the Vocalink smart bulb. And at 20 bucks, you're still getting a great color colorful smart bulb that works with HomeKit. The bulb is bigger than most smart bulbs and may not fit on all of your light fixtures, so keep that in mind. Add 850 lumens of brightness it's very bright, but it's not as hard on your eyes like other bulbs like Yee Light. Colors are pretty good, though it does struggle with red and green when compared to LifeX. Dimming range is excellent. It gets very dim at 1%. The Vocalink app has an easy to use slider to adjust the colors, temperatures, and brightness. And there are really awesome lighting effects that you can do with this bulb. And some of my favorites are blink and candle. And the best part about these effects is that you can get them into HomeKit using a third party app. The Home Plus 5 app is the easiest app for doing this, but since it costs $15 and exceeds our budget, you can use the free Eve app to achieve the same effects. By first creating your lighting effect in the Vocalink app, then adding the current state as a scene in the Eve app, and the scene will sync over to HomeKit. And when you're done, make sure to create another scene with the light effect mode to zero so the light will reset back to normal. You can use an automation with a contact sensor so whenever a door opens up at night, then your light bulb can flash or blink red to indicate a alarm. Or you could have your lights automatically turn on in the morning so you don't have to worry about turning them on, it will already be done for you. Or you could have your light do a candle flicker effect that can help you relax or get ready for bed. Next up is NFC tags. And this is what I would call the secret weapon for HomeKit since it can take your smart home to a whole new level. They cost about $7 for a pack of 10, so it's very affordable and you can get a lot at one time. They're just tiny stickers that uses NFC or near field communication to communicate with your phone and the tag. And these tags will natively work with the iPhone XS or later using Apple's free shortcuts app. Older iPhones will require a third party app to use these tags. You can stick them about anywhere and you're able to control your smart home devices like turn on lights, running Siri shortcuts, or even open apps on an Apple TV just by placing your phone up to the tag. And since they're tiny, you can put these in secret places like behind wall plates and seriously blow people's minds when your lights can change colors just by placing your phone up to a random wall plate or under a kitchen counter. And because each tag is tied to one specific phone, you don't have to worry about other people controlling your devices whenever you're not around. So you can put one in different spots in your home that will only run whenever you scan the tag and won't do anything else whenever somebody else scans the tag. Now to take this to the next level, you can create complex automations like an if-then statement that will get the status of your device, say like your door, 
and if it's locked, it can unlock your door. Otherwise, if your door is unlocked, then it can lock your door. Or you can even create a time conditional shortcut that will only run if the time of day is between a certain time, then it can turn off a light. One of my favorites is whenever I scan an NFC tag in my kitchen, it will play music on my HomePod mini and adjust the lights based on the time of day. Morning is chill vibes, during the day is upbeat and bright, and night is relaxing. I'll be making a video soon on how to create time conditional series shortcuts, so make sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out. The next device that I would add when you're creating a smart home is a contact sensor. I would recommend the Akara contact sensor since it's cheap and works very well, but it requires an Akara hub and that exceeds the budget, so my next choice is the Vocalink contact sensor for 20 bucks. It supports Bluetooth 5.0, which means fast alerts in HomeKit, and long range, which is helpful for automations. And it has a green LED that lights up whenever it's opened and closed. However, battery life is up to six months, which is way worse than a car's over two years or other home fit contact sensors that can last over a year. A basic but time-saving automation is that whenever a door opens, it can auto turn on a smart bulb. And whenever a door closes between a certain time of day, it can automatically turn off the lights in a room so you don't forget to turn off the lights. Or whenever a bedroom door is open at night, then it can automatically turn on a smart plug that is on your TV. So by the time you get comfy with your snacks, your TV will be on and you can start watching the show right away. And one of the more unique automations is that you can put a contact sensor inside your mailbox and have Siri alert you whenever mail arrives. You got mail. Oh sweet. Now this contact sensor is rated for indoor use only, so use this at your own risk, and also depends on how far away your contact sensor is away from your house if this will work. And the final device that I would add when first creating a home kit home is an indoor camera, which can be used for a pet cam, watching for packages, or just to keep tabs on what's going on inside your house while you're away. Normally, I would recommend the Akara G2H camera because it has features that no other HomeKit camera has, but at like 60 to 70 bucks, it does exceed the budget. So my next choice is the Eufy Indoor Cam 2K that works with HomeKit. There's a 1080p version that's about 25 bucks, but it's currently out of stock as of this recording. So we'll be going with the 2K version instead that is about $10 more. Video quality is clear with bright colors and is quite smooth with motion around objects or faces. It has a 125 degree field of view, which is one of the lowest fields of view, so it won't be able to capture as much at once. There's a pan and tilt version that is able to pan around the room if you need to see around the whole room. But of course, this will cost a little bit more. Night vision on the Eufy Cam is clear with eight IR LEDs. Motion alerts are fast, and with HomeKit Secure Video, you'll have access to specific detection settings like person and pet, along with the ability to view the last 10 days of recordings in the home app and it has support for local storage so you're able to use a micro SD card for 24 7 recording as well as have HomeKit record clips whenever there is motion even though this camera is 2k quality the home app will only stream and record in 1080p quality and it does not have two-way talk in the home app HomeKit cameras have a motion sensor exposed but there's really only one automation that you can do if motion is detected or not detected so when motion is detected then it could turn on some lights let me know what devices that you would buy if you only had a hundred bucks to build a home get smart home down in the comments below and thank you for watching.